on this week's Nonsensible Podcast. By the time we get citizenship, it's too late. The one big thing was just like, everyone was Korean. I was like, wow, everyone's Asian. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that was the biggest thing for me. Acting like, like I don't like the bars and clubs anymore. Yes, yeah. you do. I was more of like, I was a very a homebody type of person. So I was home a lot. An yeah. ambivert, as we like to yeah. call it. This is Nonsensible. Hey guys, welcome to Nonsensible with Dave, Sam, Saul from Accounting, Lex from 28 Lab, and we. Yeah. And Thursdays are for the fellas. <laughs> Thursdays are for the boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're Lex. back at you with a new guest, uh, Lex. Lex. Yeah, you can call me Alex, Lex, whatever's comfortable for you. <laughs> Lex, for all the listeners and viewers out there, please introduce yourself. Um, yeah, so hi guys. My name is Lex. Um, I'm an artist who works with our team, 28 Laboratory. And um, I just released a single a couple months back. So go check it out. Sick. What's the name of the single? Uh, the single is called Black. Dope. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty dark thing, but it's got a whole story behind it. So it's cool. Dope. Right on. Do you want to tell us a bit of the story? Um, Why is it so dark? Because because I'm, we had a brief chat before and you seem like one of the people that is… Farthest removed from darkness. Uh, yeah, so I just had like a lot of… Like in the past um, show mm-hmm. with Michael, um, I actually had like a really tough past too. But then similar with him, like that kind of built me up to what I am now. Yeah. But um, I actually got out of the army um, end of 2019. Oh. Yeah. And um, but oh, then… So, oh, so you got out Welcome of the back. army… You, well, yeah. not really. You get out of the army in 2019 and you hit COVID. Pretty much. Oh. Um, so I got out then, but then a lot of people, most of my friends, they have a good time when they're in the army or they seem to. Yeah. But then I don't know, maybe because I went at a late age that it wasn't that enjoyable. Mm-hmm. So like, um, but I had a lot of time to like self reflect and think back and stuff. And then just, I went through a lot of like ups and downs, just like emotionally and mentally. And I just kind of wanted to like dump that into a song. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. And then that's pretty much what that was. But that was kind of like, I have like, most of my songs aren't that dark, but I feel like that's one I had to get off my shoulder before I moved on. Was that the like lo- most amount of time that you spent alone? Um, in the, while I was in the army. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a very I like to be alone often. Yeah. I'm like a what do you call that when you're like an introvert and extrovert? Ambivert, yeah, I'm that. So sometimes what I what is what is that, dude? There's a word for everything. I yeah, yeah, it's so like ambidextrous, on. but for yeah. personality. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 what is it? Ampivert. Yeah, 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 I did. I found out not too long ago about that word. So crazy. You hate that? I do, I just hate how there's a word for everything now. This yeah, is, I'm a I'm a ex central blah 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 blah. Uh. That means I uh, also enjoy golf, but at the same time I hate life. But uh, <laughs> like, what do you? What? I don't. There's I, a yeah. word for that. I, I don't even know any what? of these words. Shut up. Yeah, but pretty much like I just like to Sorry. be alone. It wasn't against you, yeah. Dan. It was just sometimes the, that there's a yeah. word for everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like but, it's just. So but at annoying. the same time, I want to be with like. There's times where I just want to hang out with a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like everyone's like that. That's normal. But then all of a sudden, like they're like, oh, you're envy from like, Thank you, what Sam. is that? It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you like to be an introvert and extrovert. I'm like, so that makes me normal, right? Yeah, so exactly. Like, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, so like, it's it's normal. Normal. yeah, exactly. But like, it's like, no, you're envy from like, okay, I guess I'm an envy. Sure. I just do what the fuck I want to do. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Yeah. Put me in a box and give me a title. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, each to their own. I think. Can you guys stop that in 2021? <laughs> can we stop? Oh, can you just stop? <laughs> it's not like the world's advancing, is it? It's like we <laughs> yeah. giving people, two people advancing. are different. Yeah. More and more titles. It's like just let people be who they yeah. are and be themselves. Everyone's and different. Fuck it. That's that's what it used to be. Like oh. This, I'm different. But it, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, different became like a di- like 20 different words. Yeah, exactly. This, this, is, this is my friend Dave. He's Dave. You know, work out, you know, let him tell you about himself instead of saying, I'm Dave and I'm ambidextrous and I'm also… I'm a bilateral you know, ex rock. What, what the f- <laughs> that means? <laughs> so, so you've also… We, we had Michael in the other week and he was talking about uh, growing up in Australia and, and going to the army… Yeah, yeah. You, you were born in the States or did was, you grow up in the States was, similar to Michael? So I was born in New York and then I moved to Jersey. And then I came into Korea back in 2000, early 2011, I want to say. Or maybe late 2010. Mm-hmm. And then I was an American citizen and I came to do music. And I, I got scouted by a, a label. But 
long story short. Can you short, mention the label? Um, it was s- Ulim Entertainment. Uh-huh. So they hit me Ulim. up. When I was in America, I didn't know anything about K-pop. They just hit me up like, we got some kind of deal for you. I'm like, okay, cool. I came through. And then straight from the airport, I went. it was my first time in Korea. Mm-hmm. I went straight to Ulim oh, Entertainment. Oh. And then the boss sat me down. I had a meeting. I couldn't understand half the stuff he was talking about because my Korean was trash. Wow. Then. And he's like, all right, we're going to do an audition. I'm like, what are you talking about? What's happening? And then he's like, yeah, and, he's like, and they brought me into a basement. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They brought me into a basement. There's a camera. I was like, all right, do what you got to do. I'm like, can you sing? I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, well, can you dance? I'm like, yeah, I can dance. So then it's like, all right, dance. I'm like, wait, what? And then I just, so he just, I'm like, all right, turn on a song and I just freestyled. And then um, he's like, can you rap? I'm like, yeah, I do music. And then I just rapped a verse, one of my verses. And he went back up and he just like slid me like a contract. He's like, all right, I'm making a group called Infinite. And uh, I want you to be a part of it. Now I was just like confused. I'm like, all right, I just landed here yeah. like two hours ago. And like now you want me to sign the contract. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what you're even talking about. And this is 10 years ago before there were like hundreds of rappers yeah, on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Like, don't sign the first deal. Yeah, yeah. That shit's a runaround. Yeah. What, did, what did they tell you before you got in the plane then? There, was, there wasn't much. Damn. They just come through. I'm like, okay, that was pretty much it. But I just and wanted to come to Korea. The plane that was kind of like, my excuse to come here. Uh-huh. Whoa. Um, but um. You walk in and you're like, Anya Kaseo. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> my Korean was Goodbye. so broken. Yeah, I'll be like, bye. And then um, <laughs> just walk in. It's like, bye, y'all. But I was just, I was like, just kind of scared out because it was so sus. Yeah. So like, what'd you do? Um, so he went to the bathroom. I was like, oh, I think about it. And he went to the bathroom, and I kind of dipped. I just like left. <laughs> Whoa, cool. I was like, all right, all right, I'm out. I'm leaving. And so I just walked out of the building and I went back to my mom's place. You just had a bad feeling about him? Just the whole thing. It was just like, it was all sudden. Like, I just mm. landed in Korea. Like, I'm in this like new country. I don't know anything about this place. And this guy sits me down. He wants him to sign you a seven year contract. Seven years? Yeah, for like, for like a K pop group. I don't even know. What- you must have killed that dance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. What was it? I, I just freestyled. Seven yeah. years. Seven so. years is kind of like back then was a standard deal for a, for a new group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Infinite yeah, though, didn't standard. they? Didn't they have quite a successful? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did. Actually, I met a couple of them. They're like, and then we talked. And they're like, oh yeah, I remember you. You're supposed to be a part of a group. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Like, uh, yeah, I wasn't ready. Did you regret it when you walked out? <laughs> no, not at all. You just totally were like, no, f- this. I'm not yeah. just. Like, no, it's just that like that wasn't really what I was going for. Like, cause I was into like more um like. Hip hop type of music. What mm-hmm. kind of stuff? Um, so back then I was just listening to um, American music. So back then I was listening to a lot of like Jay Z. Um, that's when like um, I want to say like Big Sean, like they like first yeah. started coming out and, mm-hmm. and like Drake like st- debuted and stuff. Uh-huh. But I was into that and I saw K pop. K pop was and I was like, all right, this I don't think this is for me. Yeah, it's cool, but it's not for me. Bless you. Thank you. Yes, cats. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So pretty much that happened. Went home. And then I got to another label. Uh-huh. Yeah, I went to another place, a dancing school. Yeah. And then um they I took I, I wanted to learn how to dance like legit. So I started taking classes. And then one of the teachers was like, hey, you're kind of nice. Like you should try taking an audition here. I'm like, no, I'm good. He's like, please just try it. So then I went to another audition. And I don't I don't even know what the label was. I, I thought he was gonna be like, and they're, they're like a sketchy guy was like, here, we're gonna make this <laughs> group called BTS. And no, he's like, nah, it's, screw it's, that. It's actually very similar. <laughs> It's actually very similar. So the com- that BTS. company, that company was um, BTS. Oh, it, it, it was a, it was a pretty big company. BTS. It's SM JYP. Um, it was a company that worked with Melon. It's a very it has it has IU in it. IU. Yeah. IU is she's like damn man. Just, I, forgot, I forgot the label. Just, oh Lowen. Oh, it was Lowen Entertainment. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, I didn't know what Lowen was, but I didn't know it was a big they company. They offered you a contract. No, so I took the audition. I walked in, but it was that day where he told me about the audition. So I walked in. I had nothing prepared. I walked in and said, all right, all right, what do you got prepared? I'm like, nothing. Like, he just told me to take the audition, so I'm here. He's like, all right, what can you do? Same thing happened. Like, can you sing? I'm like, no. Oh, like, can't sing for my life. And then he's like, can you dance? I'm like, yeah, just turn something out. I danced. Like, can you rap? I rap. And then I walked out. And then he called me. He called my phone. He's like, can you come back inside? He's like, all right, starting from tomorrow, you're going to be a trainee. I'm like, uh-huh. wait, what? Like, can you come to the, come to this address and you can start training? Now, again, same thing. I was like, 
this is too sudden. Like, yeah. why is this happening? Wow. So, you cha- <laughs> so this time you you changed Dude. your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I went, should have. Went to, to the witness protection program. You have so program. many alternate lives yeah. and alternate time lives in yeah. your life, dude. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Is, was there a group that came out of that company? Yeah. That Then it was a group called History. And they had a… That was right after IU debuted. But I, I trained there for about two years. Oh, that's so you actually like, trained with yeah. them? Oh, okay. I trained okay. there for two years. But that's when like my Korean level like boosted. Because mm-hmm. I was like… My Korean was so bad. I got in trouble so much being in that company. Because I didn't know how to speak formally. Speaking Panma to people. Yeah. So then like their boss of like Low End or Melon and like K, uh, SK… Would come down just to check up on us. I'm like, yo, what's up, Depio? And and then out oh, like, <laughs> oh man, I got in so much trouble that it was pretty bad. Yeah. But then after two years, they moved me into like a vocal group. I'm like, why am I in a vocal group? I can't sing. Then I was like, all right, this ain't for me. But I was still under contract for like another six months or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So and after that, I'm like, all right, I'm out, guys, peace. And then I left the label. And then like another month passed. My mom calls me like, I got you on this. You need to get to this address in 30 minutes. Damn. What is it with parents dropping you in the deep end? Yeah, but so I'm in another… I'm in a parallel universe doing a show with Infinite. I can't go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then… It's like, I I, it. Yeah. Get to this address. She just sends me an address. Get to this address in 30 minutes. It's like, you have an audition. I'm like, okay. And I just go. Same thing. And I, I didn't even know. There's like a huge line. But then everyone seemed like… was. I'm listening to other people saying, I'm like, wow, these people are amazing. What am I doing here? I don't belong here. Yeah. I walked in. These people, like the judges there, like, all right, what do you have prepared? What do you, well, can you sing? I'm like, no, I can't. Once sing. again, nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I can't sing. I'm like, I'm not gonna show together. something. Like, I wasn't trying to be a singer. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, all right, it's like, oh, like, what can you do? I'm like, I can rap. I can dance. Like, all right, do that. And then I walked out. I'm like, all right, I, that was a bust. So you rapped? Yeah, that was. A what bust. did you rap? What did you spit? Um, I I like written verses. Yeah. And you dance as well? Yeah, yeah. But when you pull up to like an American Idol or like a K-pop kind of like singing audition… What it verse, wasn't prepared at all. What verse do you speak? Are you just freestyling? Or? No, it's like I have like a pre-written verse. Yeah, but I'm saying what was the verse? I the no, the I substance? Remember. What was the content? Dude. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering what I would do if I was in that situation. Because you know, I rhyme just, too. Just, it was… Back then, I was just well, writing… Drop about, a like, verse from Anyong or something, dude. I yeah. When That's I was what younger, I'm when I was like 21, 22, I was just rapping like I'm the best. That's like, what I was wondering. Is, yeah, was like, it just like a like fuck you, I'm the best? Yeah, like yeah, pretty much. I was like fuck you, I'm the best. Yeah. Like you guys and they're like, shit. He's the best. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody give this guy a contract. <laughs> I walk out of the building. That was a bust. He calls me. Can you come back inside? I go back in, and then I found that it was in a musical audition. So like, oh, technically this was a musical audition. Wow. But then one of the guys sitting there, he's like, but I, this is my label, and I'm actually making a boy crew. And I want you to be a part of it. So can you stay after the auditions are over? I'm like, um, okay. So this is the third yeah. offer. You Jeez. Have, without even wanting People any of it. Want them. you, bro. And then uh that happened. Wait, I have what to was see the, this man dance. What was the group? That group was High Four. Okay. Um You know that? No, I've heard I've heard of High so, Four Rings Bell. Yeah. So we Was there yeah. any four of them in the group? Yeah, there was four of us. And we did a song with IU called um not spring love and cherry blossoms. Yes, that's where. Yes, I. Yes, I know. Oh, so you actually you yes, were in that, yeah, so that group. I, I, I remember. With. Yeah, I remember that. That group I was with for about four years. That 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 song was hot. Yeah, it was on the chart. Yeah. It was like number yeah. one for like a month. Yes, I remember that. That's where I remember that. That kind of happened off the bat too. Like a lot of things in my life just happened like that a blew up. Cool. That so, too. That, like there are people that are listening to this podcast right now and they're probably like, you know, I'd love to audition for a label in Korea. And Lex is just like, I went in there. I'm like, yeah, yeah I wasn't feeling it. One, boom. <laughs> so because nah, that wasn't the boom. But that's, that's the different because like for those people like they're trying to do that. Oh, yeah, no, that's no, no, what no. they're trying to pursue. I, I completely yeah. understand. But, but like it's just like, wow, you've been… Incredibly, like you've had so many opportunities up to yeah. this stage, and there's obviously you've got a lot of talent that people have seen, and they're like, "We want to work with this guy, dude. You're so hot." <laughs> 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 but yeah, but that group I just stuck with for a minute. Yeah. So I like to make the guests feel uncomfortable. It's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, but um. And so what? That group just kind of disbanded after. Um, so we promoted for about four years and then um we got to a point where like, you know what, I feel like um we're like we're still really tight with all the members and um we have good songs, but things like just we the types of music we want to do and pursue, we all had our own individual dreams. I yeah. feel like they're all kids like me who got together. 
Mm-hmm. So these weren't kids who weren't trying to make a K-pop group. These kids who just wanted to do music. And, and they, did you like have? Did you write your own verses and stuff for this? Yeah, or? that's one thing. Like I had to put down. It's like, all right, if I'm gonna do this, like I want to write my own music. I want to yeah. produce my music. But then they were like limits to what he can give me. I was like, all right, I want to at least write when I'm gonna rap. Like I'm not yeah. gonna be a puppet for you. Mm. So then, um, and were like, they okay with that? Yeah. So then, like, all right, you write your own lyrics, except for that one big song. He's like, all right, this one you cannot write, no matter what. I'm like, okay. And then that happened to be their biggest song. I was like, all right, that I was gonna say, I bet you wished you'd had you'd written that one because I didn't. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like the verse in the originally. I was like, uh-huh. I'm not doing that. He's like, no, no, you're doing this. I'm like, what? But then, <laughs> Where, can I hear the verse? Or is that um, too old? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I have to hear the song okay, to remember okay. the lyrics. Yeah. But um, um sorry. Spot. it's a common theme in your yeah, life. They're putting they're it what, on spot like that. No, but there's, there comes a period in your life, and there's certain there's certain uh, occasions that you just kind of you know you did it, but you can't remember like all the fine points. Yeah, I mean, if I hear the song, I probably like, can remember right off the bat. But like, since you, when you go through yeah. so many songs, yeah. like you memorize it and then forget it, and then just yeah, get onto yeah. the next one. It's like a cycle. Do you remember all your all your, all your lyrics? I uh, mean, I was crazy about remembering my lyrics for a long time. What about now? Yeah, I can remember the All first. Right. I want, rap. I want the third. The first rap I ever spit. No, I want I the th- the fourth song you ever released, and I want the second <laughs> verse. Uh, 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 you don't remember, loser. I don't know, the <laughs> liar. I don't remember the fourth. What the fourth oh, one come on, liar with his green beanie? Come on. Also, when I when I was coming up, this was twenty years ago. We didn't release singles. We released albums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I feel like singles is more of like a And my first now. album was called I Wish We Had Some Groupies. <laughs> Excuses. How did that go for you? That was, was good. Okay. I know I'm in the groupies. Oh, that was, that was all right. <laughs> okay. so it was high school, you know? They're not real groupies. They're just… <laughs> just kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kids. <laughs> You're just in high school. Kids. Just kids. <laughs> Students. You know? Um, so the military was a decision that you made. Yeah. So after high four, mm. um, like he was just giving us like bogus shows and like our co- labels giving us bogus shows and like bogus like deals and stuff. And then our contract was ending. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna dip. So mm-hmm. and then um, I didn't. I was a American citizen, but then I didn't have a visa to work here. So then um, I had to uh register for a Korean citizenship. So I'm a dual citizen. And then they said like, oh, you got to drop your American. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. Mm. But like, oh, if you want to do that, if you want to keep both of them, you have to go to the army. So then uh, I got like stuck with having to go to the army. So I had to push that back till I thought it was over. And then it got to the point where I was like, all right, let's do some new stuff. And that's when the bogus deals came in. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm going to go to the army. Peace out. I went to the army. And then I regretted every minute of it. But I did learn a lot. And it's good to get it over with. Right? Yeah, that's pretty much what I want to. I was like, you know what? I have to deal with it one way or the other. So might as well get it over with. Wait, you wanted to stay in Korea. Yeah. yeah. And um, another reason was like… At that time, like… I was just overwhelmed. Like… I got to a point where like… I just know too many people. I have too many friends. And like… The internet and like… Social media and like just… Everything was like overwhelming for me at one time. Mm-hmm. And like… Like it was just like… Te- breaking, tearing me down. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I can't keep up with everything. There's… Too many people I got on me and like there's too many people contacting me. So I just like ghosted everybody, switched my number. And I just left to the army without a word. Just, without, just telling like a, just a couple of friends. So it was almost like an escape for you. Yeah, pretty much. I just needed like to run away from the world pretty much. Bro, Other people that. go to a temple stay. <laughs> I always feel that, dude. Like you want to escape? Go to the army. I, I do do it. I, I disappear a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does. I disappear that's, that's, a lot. Yeah. Don't you guys that ever case see me just similar. dip? Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dude. I just did. Yeah. I, you, just want, you just want to go MIA for a minute. People just keep… Everyone just wants to do something with you. Yeah. And compensate you for work. Like I appreciate the yeah. like love. But then at the same time… Like sometimes like I, I need time to breathe. Because uh-huh. I was just like running for like years. So then I went to the… But then I went to the training camp. Mm. And I was like, oh, this was a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> this was better. This oh, was what worst, have I gotten this myself is the into? This I made. <laughs> I just remember going… I shaved my head. I'm like, right, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to get away from everything. And then, it, and then I just open my eyes and then I hear the bell. And then people like… This, all the sergeants yelling at me. I'm like, oh my god. Oh. I'm in the army. What did I do? You just jo- I it sounds like up. a music video. Yeah, I screwed up. I you did- just joined the regular army? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. how old were you then again? Uh, I was 28. 
I oh, believe, 28. 28. That's, that is kind of long in the tooth for the army, especially yeah. when you've got commanding officers who are 19. And they're talking to you. Well, did they're it. barking at you in yeah. pump mode. Yeah. They're like, allowed to. Right? Yeah. Because they're your commanding that. officer. I did not know that. I didn't know that they looked like they were 10 years older than me. Yeah. And then after the training was over, I found out they're like, like 21. Yeah. And I was like, excuse me? You like you made me like do like fifty push ups. You rolled me around in the dirt. Like are you kidding me? And you're nineteen. <laughs> yeah, it kind of it's a bit of a, a head. I've like heard it's going, it, you have the hierarchical system here based on age is, is so strong in Korea. But then once you go into the military, no. age goes out the window. It's all about it's rank. rank. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So kids straight out of high school are a ranking officer over. Mm. You could be a thirty year old guy. Joining the military. How do, how do these like young kids get move up so high though? Well, um, no, because so it's quickly. It's no, it's, it's, fast. it's very fast. It's like a it's two fast. year a two year window. So you're going from um, a private up to, I, I don't even know the term. You can English. go up to four ranks. Ah, uh, these yeah. aren't like lifelong. No, 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 no. They're not professional kids who are planning yeah. to be professionals. Yeah. No, uh, I mean they can if they yeah, want if to. They, if they want to, they kind of like scout you while at, you do at, it. Mm-hmm. After two years, you're like so. You know, like, I'm gonna keep doing this. Yeah, it's like yeah, like I have nothing else going for me. Might as well. And some kids are like that. Yeah, that's a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, places, there are some people that are the rank people, quite high, but they started early. Mm-hmm. Like, some people love it. Yeah, yeah. People, people around my love, like I've, having a schedule. I have I have friends that loved their time in the military. Yeah, yeah. Considering doing it as a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said like you said you knew people who enjoyed it, but you just didn't feel the same. Yeah, it just wasn't for me. It's just the fact that like I thought I was ready because my Korean was so much better. And then I went in and like the Korean they use in there, like it's complete. It was yeah, a different language. It, it was, was a different yeah, it was a different language. And I, like I had to change pants and like my um my jacket and then I didn't know which line to get in because they call it like Sangi Hai. I didn't know what that was. I, like I thought it was Dude, just like Paji, like wheat like wheat tongue or something. That's yeah. that's that's pretty basic though. Too. But I, I didn't know. My Korean was not like I didn't know like um like Formal, like re- legit Korean. Yeah. Because yeah. I learned from just speaking and going around. Yeah. And then I was like stuck in between two lines and they're yelling at me and I was like, what is happening? He's yeah. like, get in line. What do you need? Like, I need to change both of them. What do I do? And then I, and then I, you're not supposed to say like yo, like, I know how to say yo. Yeah. Or, like, it's gotta be like, Imnina. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Tanaka. You call it Tanaka. Yeah. But I kept on saying yo because I didn't know how to use Tanaka that well. I was like, oh, just And then, and I got I got so much trouble for saying yo like all the time. Wow. But then I told him like it's like why can't you know why don't you know Korean? I'm like I'm, I'm American. And then they're like it's like you don't know Korean. I'm like yeah. And then they didn't know what to do about it. They're like oh should have okay. started speaking well, to well, them. We'll in get English. back in line. So then- my boy told me the other day he just pretended like he didn't speak Korean for two years in the military. <laughs> That's- you could do that. He was, he was just like I didn't. I my I, he had moved from the states, and he was like, I don't. I didn't. I of course I was fluent in Korean because he grew up with like Korean parents. Mm. But he was like, I didn't know how to do that, and I so I just decided to pretend for two years like I didn't speak any. And he actually did. I've, there there were some kids like that. Mm. Yeah, they're acting dumb, but they they kind of treat you like an idiot. You're yeah, like you don't want that. You're like the battalion idiot. So yeah, that were was you a, the battalion idiot? No, I was. Nice. I, I tried. I, like I tried. You really tried. You showed effort. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's so cool. I, yeah. But then, like, yeah, I, even if I would pass out, like, I would just keep going. So you don't no, want to be the battalion it. idiot, right? Or, you yeah. don't want to be the battalion. Yeah, I saw. Idiot. No, I saw that kid. And I'm like, all right, I don't want to be that kid. Nobody, like, wa- yeah. nobody <laughs> wants to be that. Kid. Yeah, like I don't want to be that kid. <laughs> no, but could you not have uh, applied to be in the Katusa? Yeah, I was um, asked that earlier. Which is, the, but that too is like kind of like it's random. It's like a lot of random. It's a lot of. Is, so, does everyone is that, want to be a Katusa? Yeah. So you know what a Katusa yeah, is. Yeah. It's so it's the, they're the the middleman between the Korean Army and the American Army here. For Dude, the it's essentially the Army lottery. So if you yeah. if you get that, it's it's just a, there's a huge list and yeah. just, they ra- pick a random. A random I thought it was interview process. I thought they had to it's like random. it was based on language ability and That's so you have a higher chance. Apparently, you probably have a higher chance if you come out of like a good school or something. I blah, had a blah, perfect blah, but, score. I oh, had a perfect really? score, and then there's another young I knew, and he had, he it's just random. passed mm. like a 750 or something out of like 990. And he got in, and he got in, and he barely <sighs> spoke English. And I'm like, that's not cool. Yeah, it's random. It's I so, only it's, know that word from like military guys. It's just like like we play basketball with the chips. Man, my katus is f-ing around again. <laughs> 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 I was like, I didn't even know it was a Korean word. <laughs> no, katusa, yeah. Wow. I know a lot of Korean friends who are like, yeah, I wish I. Every, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone I know is, that, that's gone through military service, more often than not, that was the direction they wanted to take it because you get access to the US base. Yes. You get weekends off. Um, you can also com- be a DJ. 
Well, really? Yeah. But you, you can be a DJ for the radio station that they have broadcasting into North Korea. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Do you know they like broadcast radio yeah, signals yeah, yeah. into North Korea? Like uh, our boy Jake told us that uh, one of his friends, that was his job. And he would just like fall asleep in the in the DJ booth. Well, they get, they, my understanding is they get American holidays. They get Korean holidays. They have the weekend off. Oh, wow. Uh, it's completely different to the, just the American, uh, sorry, just the Korean military. Y'all want to be Katusas? Huh? Y'all want to be Katusas? I'd f- rather done that <laughs> any day. Yeah. I mean, if that was if if I was going in the army, like here in Korea, that would be definitely be the option I'd be taking. If one of us wanted to go to the Korean army to become a Korean citizen, would they let us? They, no, I think there's like no. Yeah, they probably wouldn't. No, I you. think you can't. Dependent on age. We, we, it's too late. We lost the window a long time ago. <laughs> You'd have to get married and change your citizenship and be under thirty five. But we're by the time we get citizenship it's too late mm-hmm. i used to think about that believe you were not. thinking about really? doing that yeah i used to think about that but i i, I don't want to rush marriage you could have brought like a, a gopro in there and made a whole <laughs> <laughs> really like made a whole youtube channel about becoming a caducer yeah because they're gonna let him do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy did this this goofball what, what what was your uh your family's when you said i'm going to the army what was their kind of take on that um they were actually really happy about it. I was scared for my life, but mm. they were just really happy. Are your parents it. super Korean? Um, actually, my mom she was in the states for about thirty years. Okay, when she so. came back to Korea. Like she was just as lost as I was. Oh, okay. On on that note, the, the this is kind of a little bit of a different direction. If yeah. I people I know whose parents moved to the states from Korea, like for example, if they moved in nineteen seventy, they kind of have that nineteen seventy mentality of Korea. Yeah. Did, and and they can actually be more conservative than parents mm. who have stayed in Korea. Did did you find that with your mother? Obviously, a thirty year window is, yeah. is a big period of her life, yeah. and having moved to Korea, uh, America and then coming back. She when she just came back, she was just like mind blown of how like just it's civilized so much better and the technological advances it made in over the past thirty years. Mm-hmm. She was like, no, they used to be like used to like people are farming for food mm-hmm. and. So that's what I was expecting when I came to Korea. Uh-huh. I was like, yo, they got buildings. This is civilized. Like, yeah. this isn't the Korea that I heard about. Because she was talking about it, like Korea from like 40 years ago. Mm. So… Yeah, even like when I got here in 2008, it looked modern as hell compared to where I was from in Atlanta. So… Yeah, me too. When I came to Korea, I was mind blown. Like, yeah, your subway system, like, this is nothing like New York. Yeah. Like, New York needs to catch up. What are we doing? When I first came… When I first came here, like, I, I used some, like, recruiting site to get an English teaching job here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, like, the website was, like, 10 years old. And I came, like, 10 years ago. And all of the things that they had written about Korea scared the shit out of me. It was like, make sure that you don't bring condoms, like, in your suitcase… Uh, Korean people don't like foreigners coming. They'll poke holes in them or steal them. <laughs> like Korea probably <laughs> won't have that. Probably won't have very fast internet. So be careful. Like make sure that you do all this crazy stuff. That was just total bullshit. Like when I got here, it was like way better than America on everything. <laughs> like that's how fast Korea grew. You know. Yeah, pretty much. Even like, when I first came, my most mind blowing thing was just like the cultural differences and. The one big thing was just like everyone was Korean. I was like, wow, everyone's Asian. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. Like that was the biggest thing for me. And then when, when you came, go back to America, you're like, man, everyone is not Asian. Yeah. That's because I was used to like the diverse culture. Yeah. And then I came, I'm like, wow, everyone is Korean. This is weird. This yeah. is mind blowing. Why do they look like me? And like, <laughs> for me, it was you're like, and I'm sure yourself, that, oh, that's right. I'm Korean. Yeah. I'm sure you guys too, you, you get used to it. It gets kind of like peaceful to like not. Have you ever watched, gone to a movie theater and watched a movie? Been in there for like two hours and watched a movie in the West. And then the le- lights go on and you look around and you're like, oh. Because you got so into the movie and you forgot that you're… In, in Korea? In Asia. In Korea and Asia. And then you're like, holy shit, I'm not… Wow. I, I, sorry. So it's, it's a phenomenal feeling that mm-hmm. I get when I watch a movie and then I come back to reality in Korea. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I had to… A similar experience, but for before I first went to New York, I was always I had this I was going through this stage and you know how in Korea they kind of just put garbage trash in trash bags for the trash collectors to pick it up. Mm. Yeah. In Australia we have like these wheelie bins, these big green yeah, bins yeah, that you yeah, put yeah, them yeah. in so you don't see the trash bags and you have 
garbage cans along the street. So people, if they're walking along with an empty coffee cup, they'll just toss it in a trash can. Whereas here, they don't have that many trash cans and you just people tend to kind of just leave just litter. And it was kind of like, you know, Australia is so much cleaner. Why is, you know, why people just leave on the ground? Then I got to New York and there's like puddles of stagnant, <laughs> filthy trash water that stinks. It's like burning your nostrils. And you're like, rats. <laughs> and you're like, holy <laughs> career is like, New York has just opened my eyes. I went through the same experience in London. It's like, shit, it, Korea is actually super clean. Mm-hmm. New York, London. These guys need to. And Korea is really up. good at with the trash now. It seems like well, it's, all the separate bags. And yeah, stuff. but I think it's just this whole thing of you when, when you get yourself in an environment, you've kind of it's almost tunnel vision. You kind of forget what's happening outside of the world. Kind of like what Dave said. He gets stuck in a movie and then he wakes up and he's like, you know, he kind of gets out and he's like, I, I thought I was in the movie and and whatnot. It's it's a weird phenomenon when you've you know also traveling halfway around the world and being used to some similar environment and it's completely different. Mm-hmm. With the trash too, I remember like, I, same thing, like in New York, we just toss everything in one bag and throw it away. But here everything's… Everything's recycled. Yeah, recycled and separately. Even within the recycling, it's like separate, like with cans, plastics and all that stuff. And you're supposed to like rinse it all out. Yeah. Rinse the, rinse the plastic bottle, take the labels off it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I came and then I was like, all right, I'm, I had like a big pile of garbage. Mom's like, all right, go down over there and like separate everything. What are you talking about? Yeah. Why do I, why am I Put doing Put my that? hands in the trash. Yeah, like what, what are you talking about? Why am I doing that? Yeah. And then I thought she was like, I thought I was getting punished for something. But then I found out that's what everyone does. And I was like, wow, like this is why Korea is so clean. Yeah. Because the streets are like much cleaner than New York. Like there are clean parts of New York. Like I was from Nyack. So that's a very like, it's like a village. And it's very clean. Mm-hmm. But like go to like more like Times Square or something. Like oh man, don't yeah. even get me started on Times Square. The size of the rats there. They're like little dogs. <laughs> yeah. You remember the Princess Bride rats, right? <laughs> I do not off the top of my head. You but... remember that movie though, right? You've seen Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Bits yeah, and parts it. of it. Those rats. I've never seen a rat before a mouse. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that in my entire life. Dude, when I was in college, I lived in this house with like seven people. And by, we had a nice like screened in back patio, but we would we didn't use it. We just threw like, em- like beer cans and back there and when we moved out there was a princess bride rat like under all of this trash are rats like cute aren't they they're like little no, animals not, not they're near, dirty new york yes new york rats are pretty they're pretty they're filthy they're animals. Nasty, if really? they bite you you'd probably need a couple of tetanus shots <laughs> yeah. yeah and they're just filled with disease that, that and they don't just scary. eat cheese like in the have, movies Dave. Well, they eat trash have you seen that video of the the, the the rat in the subway in new york and it's got like that slice of pizza that's yeah Dragging up the steps. <laughs> That's cute. It's like I've seen a squirrel really? eat a piece of what pizza. About if that, that was, was cute. What about as if fuck? that rat was doing that in your apartment? Would that be cute? <sighs> Not really, but I, I wouldn't like go like ah. I'd just be like, it's Give an me animal. Pizza, little buddy. No, I, just, <laughs> I, I couldn't kill it for sure. Oh no, that's I way too big. I can't. Yeah, I, I can kill it. it. I would just let it outside. I wouldn't go near it. But I have cats. They would probably oh, destroy would just, that yeah. thing. <laughs> Have you have three like, cats. You have enough cats that would, yeah, that thing would be in trouble ramping <laughs> yeah. your house for your pizza. Dave's like, fight club, fight club. Dude, even <laughs> when my dog was this little, my cats wanted that thing, dude. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But I still see your cats kind of like out of the corner of their eyes sometimes. <laughs> nah. That thing, I could fuck that thing up. No, they fuck my dog up all the time, poor yeah. thing. Yeah. How, how did uh, 28 Laboratory evolve for you? Were you were your original part of Michael's, uh, what was um, it? Group chat. chat. The dude's chat. Yeah. yeah, we have like the group, like this group chat with like 10 dudes. But like um, around, we all met around the same time. Like I was friends with mostly everyone. Mm. But then um, I kind of like, I had at that time, there weren't a lot of like 90s kids. So I wanted to like, all right, I need like, to, I need to connect these people and like <laughs> make friends. 90s kids. We, we, yeah. we, we, what was it? Was it like, because you didn't go to school here. So they weren't school friends. Was it like… So I, well, to, as… Promoting as an idol, like you meet a lot of people in the industry. So then most of them were people who worked in the industry who were idols or just uh-huh. who worked entertainment, videography, directors and whatnot. And um, I kind of wanted to connect everyone. I'm like, you know what? I have another friend and he speaks English. Oh, I have another friend. He speaks English. I kind of like group this mm-hmm. all together. And then um, Michael came through. I met him when we were 28. And then um, uh, he came to Korea with like absolutely nothing. I was like, oh, I was like, what are you here for? I was like, oh, I just came through. To like do some stuff. Like what are you doing? Um, I don't know yet. I just came. I'm like oh. So. Okay that's cool. 
Like, were you one of the guys that was like, yo, you should do something? Um, yeah, because like he he was always he didn't really have a plan. He just he was just here and he didn't really have a plan to go out to. So um I was like, yo, like you're you always talk about like fashion and clothes and like and you you really like the way he dressed was really like flashy and like mm-hmm. just really like a fashionista. So I was like, yo, you should try that. You should try like using that as a weapon and um like marketing that and marketing yourself mm. as a fashion designer. And he's like, but he was kind of hesitant to, hesitant to do that at first. But I thought I felt like he was losing out on a good opportunity because he has such potential, but he was not using it. Mm-hmm. And then he started doing like a re- he started working at a retail store, and I was like, all right, that's cool too and stable. But like I feel like you're you can do so much better than what you're doing now. A good friend. Yeah, I mean, I like to share energy. I don't want. I feel yeah. like potential shouldn't be wasted. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then I went to the army and then came back and then I was kind of… The song Black, it just talks about like how you just lost and you just… You, when your vision is just like black, you're like, alright, you just lost. You don't know what to do. Mm. You, and you just mentally and like just your path is kind of like dark. And um, that's kind of where I was after the army because I was just focused on the army. I thought I was like, alright, I'm going to have a long time. I get to think about my life and whatnot. I was like, no, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to breathe. <laughs> you don't have any time. I don't have time to do nothing. So when I got to the army… Like I tried to write lyrics and stuff, but like you can't think. Like all I'm thinking about is what I have to do in like two hours. Yeah. But um, once I got out, I was kind of like lost. And then um, I just I was just so hungry to make music while I was in the army. So then once I got out, I just started writing and just pumping out songs. Like I just maybe like maybe like a song a day. Wow. And then um, but that drained me out real quick. That went for like two weeks. How did you spend? Because you get uh, time off as well, so you get like holiday from the army like two days or three days um, I, I try to like save them up and then um I'll just shorten your time in the army um I saved I saved like two weeks to save up uh, get out a little earlier mm-hmm. but then I try to get out as often in like a two day span or a three day span so I'll go like every uh, other month for like a weekend okay but then that wasn't the normal thing that other people do because they would just like save up a week and then go out like wait three months and go out for like a week mm-hmm. but like I just needed that like I need people energy Mm-hmm. Away from the army, I was like, "All right, I need, I need to see people." And then every time I came out, I'm like, "Wow, these buildings are so tall!" And I would start like, like admiring the things and like that's not in the army. Uh-huh. I was like, "Wow, if we take all this for granted, look at all this beauty and soul." <laughs> but um, so that obviously that didn't help with productivity either. No, <laughs> it helped with me my stabili- uh, stability though. Yeah. But whenever I came out, I would meet up with my friends, and then they would be, I would see what they were doing. They would um, keep me updated with what's happening, mm-hmm. and um, they're kind of like brought up my like hunger level of how hard I want to work. Mm-hmm. And then once I got out, that's what really boosted me to like really grind really hard. And then… But I had all this music and I was like, all right, what do I do with it? And then I was thinking… But I've been with the experiences in the past with labels. I'm like, I don't think that's the route for me. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, I contacted Michael. I was like, you know what? Like I'm not 100% sure but I feel like you guys are going down a good path and I, I have faith in what you do. And I have faith when I do. Because I I believe strongly like I can deliver. And I feel like you can help me with this. And I can help you guys. Like kind of like works both ways. So then he was like, yeah, like we they were always in open arms for me. Mm-hmm. But then I was kind of like hesitant to do that. Because I was more like, all right, I just need to figure my own head out right now. But after I kind of like cleared my head out, I was like, all right. Now I'm kind of ready to work. Legit. And then I was like, all right, let's do this. And then we got together. And then like. Maybe like a month later, we came out the song Black. And then just doing the same rotation from there on. Cool. Did Michael call you in his office and slide a contract across the table? No, it's very, oh. it's very um mutual. <laughs> okay. You're gonna be a very star. Very mutual verbal contract. <laughs> <a> star. <laughs> are you um during the pandemic, are you focusing a lot on writing songs like faster or are you what are you trying to do during um, this pandemic? Because I'm sure this pandemic has affected everybody. I was more of like… I was a very a homebody type of person. So I was home a lot. So yeah. An ambivert as we like to yeah. call them. But like… <laughs> like <laughs> so like when we party, we party. But then like if I'm home, that's cool too. Yeah. So this isn't that huge of a change for you. Yeah. So like… Other than the… Other party. than the fact that now we're forced to stay home. Yeah. Like you know what? Then I might as well like put use that to use. And then spend that yeah. time on my music and work and my craft. Do you miss… I, you, like everyone else, I'm sure you miss going out, having a drink with… Friends yeah, and sure. stuff. For I miss sure. it so much. I miss it so much. I feel like just the fact that now we can't do it. It, it I didn't do it that much because I could anytime I wanted yeah, exactly. to. I live now in the middle of home yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. So like like in the middle. Right. You, you right in the middle. Like I just walk outside and there's just bars and clubs yeah. everywhere, you know? And 
now that I can't, even though I wouldn't do it otherwise, it just it, it annoys just me. That you don't have the option. Yeah. Too. I think everyone's everyone's in the same boat. It's like now that you tell me I can't and you yeah. know there's a restriction in place, you're like, it's just like the devil's fruit. You know? Yeah. The devil's like, don't touch it. And you're like, well, I want to eat it now. I, I'm glad it happened when it did. Like, I, I just don't, don't like bars and clubs and shit anymore anyways. All I want to do is, all I want to do is hang out with like one friend and drink <laughs> soju and talk. Yeah, but you like being out past nine too though. Yeah. What are you talking about? Before this pandemic, we'd, we'd go out and play beer pong and drink. And <laughs> So what are you talking about? You, so you, you, so you, you green beanie liar. Only yeah. with you. So you're saying you don't <laughs> like you don't like getting in groups of five people or more. I, I well, I would not because it's against protocol. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's, he's the, such a liar. Beyond the protocols. <laughs> Every day after basketball, oh, uh, you guys want to get a drink? Uh, and we end up going home at like three, four a.m. But I'm saying that's different than like being a uh, like going to a bar. We, I like we eating went and to drinking. Bars, I just love Korean style, like eating and drinking. Talking with three saying. with two people, which you can still kind of do mm. now. It's before yeah. nine. Yeah, Be- <laughs> as long as, <laughs> yeah. before nine. As long as you're in bed and you don't have a temperature. Yeah, no temperature. Mm. I think you adjusted more than okay. When I first met you, you were out a lot. A lot, yeah. But do not act like you didn't say, "Yo, let's go." Party sometimes because you did do I like that. To party, yeah. you, I know you do. Yeah, You're like acting like, like I don't like the bars and clubs anymore. Yes, okay. you do. Yeah, I'm just saying I prefer hanging out with smaller that, groups. Okay, that's that's that's. I'm an ambivert. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I, I like to have my cake and eat it too. You know, I like to be out, but I also you know, like so to keep it small. You're a cake eater, right? Yeah, I'm a B14. You guys want to see alert. some cake? No, don't do it. All right. <laughs> he was really about to fart. Uh, no, I wasn't going to fart. I was going to show my ass. Oh, I thought you were going to fart. Is that your nickname for cake? Well, that's what people call is now yeah. cake. cake. Really? Yeah. Really? You guys, I, think uh, that, I think that was a thing ever since a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know. Really? In what, part of, the, in what part of the world? In the US. I thought you were going like, to fart. Like, <laughs> wow. Sorry, I don't know why I'm so into this. <laughs> 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 what? Sorry, guys. <laughs> You got so heated uh, over cake. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm just, this is so, something foreign and something completely new to me. I've never, I've never heard it a either. A cultural yeah. breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> Although I am an ambivert. I was probably at home when it got me. When it got me. When it got me. <laughs> I miss a lot being the ambivert that I am today. Small group. <laughs> oh, oh sh- This is taking a really weird direction. Yeah, it does get like you know what this these last two podcasts have been very toned down compared to our usual podcasts. Yeah, they get pretty weird because we have some wild, some guests telling some wild stories, and our very first episode was ridiculous, like breaking fingers and knife fights and prison. You have any? You have any uh, knife fights? I don't have any knife (laughs) finger breaking. Do you have any stories about prison? People tend to come in here and talk about prison stories. No, there's a lot of prison stories in the army. Like there's a lot of kids go to the army. Uh, do, you, do you have to censor? Your, go ahead. You go first. Do you kind of feel like uh, you have to censor yourself the way that other like K musicians kind of have to do, or um, because you're working with like a friend, can you? Well, back if then, you had a knife fight, would you be able to talk about it here <laughs> on Dive Studios? Uh, I, I think mean, back I, then I would you were to. censored. Um, back then I was censored to a point, but I didn't like it, so I kind of like even if they told me not to, I'd be like, "What are you gonna do about it?" Once if I say it's already out there, so yeah, I didn't like I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about his music a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good thing. Wait, let's talk about your music a little bit more. What are, what are you working on now? You have some more stuff coming um, soon? Actually, so ever since the army and um, my last… Well, Black I had written way back. Um, like right when I got to the army. And then I just had that sitting for a minute. But since then, I just kept making songs. And I have like… I have enough songs for like three albums already. Oh. But like I'm just super picky with like just how I want to present them. And like… I. I'm kind of. I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist because I'm not. Mm. But I do kind of want to reach as close to that as mm-hmm. I can without being too picky about it. Like I don't want to like postpone it for like months. Mm-hmm. But I want to I see. Mm-hmm. get the best possible outcome with the music. And I just want to. F- I want the music to kind of fit the mood that I'm the present state of where I'm at mm-hmm. right now. And like if, if you I'm, let it go on for too long, it doesn't fit your. Yeah, mood yeah pretty yet. much. If I have it sit for too long, like, but it does come back. Like yeah. I don't. I'm not feeling it. But then maybe like a couple of months later, I'm like, all right, now I like this song. Oh, okay. So you pre- are you preparing to put an album together or for the time being? You're kind of just um, going in the direction of um, releasing singles? Um, I was planning on releasing singles. 
for now because there are a couple of songs that I want to present as a single alone. Mm-hmm. And then there are songs that I want to present as a package that tells a story on its own. So Singles are smart anyways. Anyways in this generation. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like singles now is more of like a trending thing. Yeah. Because like, I feel like now not a lot of kids usually listen to the whole album. Do you think yeah, albums are going to come back one day? I feel like they will. I hope so. I, I, what happened? I think though? it's going full circle. Like I think what happened shit. with albums though is a lot of people took the the cheat key and you get a lot of skits in between songs and people weren't actually putting a concerted effort into not making everybody. the best well not everyone but there yeah. were artists out there pumping out albums year after year yeah. instead of taking the time to put a real album Cohesive. together yeah. but it's 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 not necessarily the artist's fault you've also got the companies that are saying you've got you know a five album contract we want you to pump another album out I've, what I've started doing recently is buying LPs, mm-hmm. vinyl again. And it's not like a CD. It's not like an MP3. You can't just skip tracks. Mm. So you actually sit down and let the record play and you appreci- appreciate the albums for what they really were mm. as opposed to we've become so instantaneous. It's like, no, f- this song, next, yeah. next. I was thinking about next. putting out my album that I just finished like as one long track. And just well, like don't do that. I'm not gonna do it. Everyone, <laughs> that's what everyone said. It's like no one's gonna hear it past like the third song then, because everyone's like attention span is too short. Yeah, it's, you know. I agree with Sam, but at the same time, there's also more reason to that as well because a, um, like you said, people are not don't take the time to listen to an album. But at the same time, you put all this effort into an album, and then it's so easy to pirate an album, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you put all this effort, and you don't make the money. Where you can put. One single out and make the same, essentially the same amount of money with less effort than making an entire yeah. album and somebody just downloads it or pirates yeah. it easily. That's one thing. And people are, because of YouTube and Spotify and everything, people are looking for music videos and single songs and chart toppers. Yeah. People are not breaking down albums. So it's at the at the point where why would I put all this effort where I can just put smaller amounts of effort into a bunch of singles and make equivalent if not more money. Mm-hmm. So… I mean, I think you have to be more of an established artist to really put an album out. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time in this in this in this environment. So I, I yeah. agree with you. It's very fast paced yeah. right now. I agree with. It, is, it, it does seem like everyone's after that chart topper. Yeah. It's you don't. Well, I mean, it's like Billboard Hot 100. People aren't looking at what's the top album on the chart anymore. Mm. It's like what's the top single? That's what exactly. people are talking about. Up until the nineties, you couldn't stream music anyways. Like in the two thousands, like you- that you're talking about piracy. Here's my take though: is, has streaming kind of eliminated piracy? I mean, as an artist, as and also yourself, you guys are probably. I don't know if people are pirating it your helps. albums, but um, you know, it helps. You, piracy helps. No, no, no. But, streaming helps. Oh yeah, but yeah. it feels like pirate people aren't downloading. Off torrents, if like people yeah. care, yeah, yeah, yeah. if no, people yeah. care about your music enough to like download it and steal it, then they probably care about you enough to go see you perform, and that's where everyone makes money. At least in America, well, like I mean, yeah, there's, that's there's where you make money. Things to piracy, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, the exposure, having, yeah. yeah, having enough people here. I mean, there ain't no music. LimeWire anymore, though. You're not you're not downloading albums off mm-hmm. torrent. Like yeah. you said, it, you it just to. seems like everything's become so much more accessible. Spotify, mm-hmm. you've got Apple, you've got um, you know, too, even yeah. Apple TV, YouTube. All these different platforms. It's affordable too. Yeah. So, mm. what's what's the long term kind of direction that you think you're going to be taking with, um, I'll be with your career? Honestly, I don't really have a full out plan. Mm-hmm. I just kind of like let it go, like do things as it goes, and then I just kind of like adjust to the environment, and see how, just see how things play out. I'm like, it's a weird time because I don't want to plan something and then. When it gets to that time, like oh, this isn't like this isn't trending or this isn't the thing to do right now. Like yeah. or this this is not the way to go. Oh. Like, I kind of like want to <laughs> yeah like adjust to the, like adapt to the environment. I mean, you kind of right now you kind of have to with the with the pandemic and everything. It's kind of like yeah, but even with much. music changes so much. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna can drop a dubstep track track in yeah. 2021. You know, it's yeah, like, just because you've been working on it. You yeah, know? but I feel like I'm more <laughs> more into like honing my own craft. Uh-huh. So like even if it doesn't go like super mainstream and I don't plan to make it sound mainstream anyways. So I'm like, all right, for people, the people who actually do want to come to see my shows and still listen to my music. Mm-hmm. And those are the people like I'm writing for. And the people who can really connect with my music to like really spiritual level or like a mental level, then that's like, then that's the blisters that I'm trying to get to listen to me. Uh, yeah. Do you have a music video out for Black? That's I, what I was do. Ask. Oh, cool. I do. Yeah, obviously, you've got the assets within 
28 uh, laboratory as well because you've got people that work in kind of visuals. Um, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But then for that song too, the music video is very minimal and I want the lyric part to be more connecting uh-huh. with the listeners. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I didn't even want the music video for that the first because I want just the lyrics to really hit. Mm-hmm. But then as we talked about before, like just the visual aspect of um, music videos now is just so much more powerful. With like everything so fast paced, so you need to have shorter songs. You need to have visuals to stimulate yeah. listening to the music. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, maybe it is a good idea to have a visualizer with the music video, um, with the song. Mm-hmm. So that's how it came to. Totally. Oh, I can't wait to check it out, man. Yeah, man. For sure. Speaking of which, is there anything you'd like to shout out? Anything you'd like to plug on our podcast before we wrap up? Um, just uh, my last single, re- my first single release that I just dropped a couple of months back, which is Black, and um, our future work that we're going to come in out, Twenty Eight Lab, which is uh, with Corbin. Uh, he's going to be releasing future singles and an album, hopefully this mm-hmm. year. And then same goes for me. I'll be releasing a single real soon, as long as I get it finished, because I'm like I'm trying to get that perfection out of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to work on that and finish that real quick. Right on. And then any future um, part, um, our merch that comes out from our crew that are made by Michael and our team. Are you, are um, you doing the production yourself on the music? Uh, we have. Some of the songs I take part in, mm-hmm. but then that too, like I really, I like to be hands on with my work. It's kind of like with clay, like I rather, I like, I like to make it the way I want it. Yep. So I do like to be very hands on with the production, but we do have a producer, a Corbin, he's a producer and artist. Mm-hmm. Cool. So um, I work with him with our beats and work. Nice. Nice. Yeah, cool. Lex, thank you for joining us uh, thank today. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Was, uh, I can't wait to hear your stuff. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely looking forward to uh, more content, not just from yourself, but also from 28 Laboratory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm like usually at the house, so I'm going to check it. I'm going to go listen to it tonight at the house. Right on. You just listen to it on the way home. <laughs> I am an ambivert. I am outside sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people that want to watch the podcast in full, you can find us on YouTube. Also check us out on Instagram as well. And you can listen to the podcast on Spotify Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. And send us a review. We appreciate all of them, especially the ones with five stars. Lex, thank you once again for joining us today. Thank Thank you you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the clip. If you did, listen to the full episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, Dive Studios, and put those notifications on. Hit that bell. Boop, boop, boop.